presentation some of our recent results on the critique failure of uh, metallic glasses under slightly shared information. Some of results were published in the uh, computational material science. Uh, so let's start with the short background. Um, uh, these types of materials, metallic glasses, are typically multi-component alloys uh, that possess a number of advantages and properties like high strength uh, and a large elastic strain limit, but often cases show uh, low ductility. Uh, there are a number of uh, important applications, for example, uh, medical devices or surgical tools, uh, they can be used in mass because of the large uh, wear and corrosion resistance uh, or sometimes sporting goods. Uh, when looking at the system at the atomic level, you can realize that there is a disordered structure with no long range order, and this uh, gives rise to a number of uh, interesting phenomena. One of them is so called dynamical heterogeneity near the glass transition. Uh, although it was uh, uh, realized uh, a number of years ago that the uh, elementary plastic event in such disordered system usually consists with a you know, collective rearrangement of uh, small clusters of atoms. Now, what's also interesting is uh, the mechanical response of such materials strongly depends on the uh, thermal preparation history. So, for example, uh, if glass is slowly cooled and then deformed uh, uniformly, then the uh, uh, mechanical response uh, would consist of a pronounced yielding peak pulled by the yielding transition via formation of a shear band. Uh, on the other hand, upon rapid cooling and straining, uh, the shear stress would exhibit uh, just a gradual crossover. Okay. Now, it was more recently realized that uh, under uh, periodic shear deformation, the critical strain amplitude is uh, smaller than the location of the yielding. And uh, in what follows in this presentation, we focus on a uh, uh, relatively narrow range uh, of uh, strain amplitudes in the vicinity of the critical value and look at the fatigue and the yielding transition in a model glass. Okay. So uh, this brings us to uh, details of uh, atomic simulation model we consider a binary Leonard Jones model that mimics nickel phosphorus system and consider simulations at the constant density, a low temperature and a relatively large system in the periodic boundary conditions. Now the glass first uh, is uh, computationally slow uh, annealed uh, to obtain a well annealed sample then uh, next uh, is subjected to a silvery shear deformation within the following range of the strain amplitude. So we first show uh, in our results uh, the dependence of uh, shear stress versus uh, cycle number for two selected values of the strain amplitude okay. and plot the shear stress in the Leonard Jones unit versus number of cycles. So we see here for a particular strain amplitude, the amplitude of, of stress uh, oscillations is nearly constant and followed by a sharp uh, drop that corresponds to the yielding transition and then the formation of a shear band where uh, the maximum stress is uh, the stress within the shear band. So one of the conclusions from this type of analysis is the fatigue lifetime or uh, the number of cycles until the yielding transition uh, becomes longer uh, when uh, the strain amplitude is reduced towards the critical value. Now along the way we can go ahead and uh, plot the potential energy 
projector article for the same strain amplitude and plot this in the Leonard Jones units of energy versus the same range uh, of the cycle numbers. So what we see here is uh, the potential energy at the end of each cycle uh, gradually increases uh, due to sequence of uh, small scale plastic events from one cycle to another until after 218 cycles there is a yielding transition formation of a shear band and then the subsequent uh, widening of such uh, a shear band. Now in what follows we just focus on uh, the potential energy minima and consider a wider range of strain amplitude. Okay, so the results are plotted here okay, for the following strain amplitudes for potential minimum versus cycle number. So what we see here that uh, at the lowest uh, strain amplitude, uh, the uh, increase in the potential energy due to plastic events is very, very, very slow until a uh, clear yielding transition uh, and then formation of a shear band. One should know that this is relatively time consuming simulation that, that uh, require about uh, 900 hours using 400 processors in parallel. Now, in each case, one can clearly identify uh, the yielding transition okay, and also realize that uh, this. Uh, shape of those uh, functions are somewhat similar, therefore it's natural to rescale the x-axis by the number of cycles until the yielding transition. So we recall then the same data uh, in the following plot for, for uh, potential energy versus normalized number of cycles and realize that uh, all those uh, functions now follow uh, as a common, a common curve okay, up to a yielding transition. Now this in turn, in, in turn implies that uh, if we know such function at uh, one particular strain amplitude, then we can deduce uh, the number of cycles to yield for another strain amplitude only after let's say, a few tens of uh, short cycles, okay, at least for this simple computational model. Now, in the inset here, we plot the number of cycles until the yielding transition uh, versus uh, strain amplitude and realize that the data here symbols can be well described by a power law function, which implies that uh, upon further uh, reducing strain amplitude, the number of uh, cycles until the yielding transition uh, might significantly increase and uh, possibly diverge uh, for the thermal for the thermal systems. Now, next we we'll look at uh, uh, so-called modifying displacement of particles, uh, which is an excellent diagnostic for identifying plastic events. In our case, we look at the displacement uh, of each atom with respect to their na neighbors over one uh, shear cycle, so that's zero strength. Okay, and this, in a sense, plot uh, the number of uh, plastic events or fraction of atoms with the large non-affine displacement versus normalized cycle number for the same values of the strain amplitude. So we see here that uh, this, this all curves follow roughly a master curve until the formation of a shear band at about uh, 0 0.15 in fraction of such numbers. Now, uh, if we enlarge this portion of the plot here and uh, look uh, what happens during the uh, fatigue process, we quickly realized that uh, approximately 1% uh, of atoms uh, with a large non-affine 
displacements are responsible for the increase in the potential energy of the system, meaning that the system becomes rejuvenated by a cyclic shear during uh, uh, like a fraction of a fatigue lifetime. Now, more visually, we can look then at the uh, spatial configuration of atoms with large non-affine displacement and realize that before the yielding transition, uh, plastic events are uh, can be uh, uh, like concentrated in the small uh, finite size clusters until at a certain cycle uh, we can clearly see the formation of a shear band across the system and the subsequent uh, widening of the shear band, uh, shear band after uh, so many so many cycles. So the details of uh, this process shown in the movie at my uh, YouTube page. Good. So uh, let's briefly conclude, and uh, we will study here the simple model. Uh, this uh, fatigue process uh, that we realize precedes your sequence of uh, small scale plastic events until the sudden formation during one shear cycle of a shear band uh, and the yielding position. So, the key results for this paper is quite remarkable that uh, potential energy. Uh, at the end of the, uh, each uh, shear cycle at zero strain as a function of a normalized number of cycle, cycles roughly follows a master curve or independent of the strain amplitude uh, and this in turn uh, means that uh, suggests that uh, we can estimate fatigue lifetimes at a given strain uh, along the slides, also, um, uh, we realize that upon approach of critical strain amplitude from above, the number of shear cycles until the yielding transition uh, is well described by a parallel function. So, more details about this, uh, uh, this work can be found in the following paper and uh, on, the, on the YouTube page. Thank you.